let's start so uh, we have time to uh, get through those activities that we didn't finish last time. Um, so um, on the homeworks, uh, let's see, we're on this homework. Um, I think about half of you have worked on it. Um, I moved it back uh, one day. I can't move it back too much because of we just have such a tight timeline between now and uh, the end of the semester. So um, I moved it back a day. But there's another homework due this weekend. Uh, th these are closely related. We've really talked about uh, uh, all these things already. Um, some of them uh, will um, uh, reiterate on the uh, on the activities uh, today. Um, um, but anyway, I, I you have enough information to start the homeworks. Okay, that doesn't mean that all the problems uh, um, will be easy or super familiar to you. Uh, don't forget about all the help features, right? Uh, that you have in the homework. Um, I wanted to mention this one because I was looking back through that homework and um, um, there were some problems there that um, uh, we hadn't talked about explicitly in class so I um, I, I deleted those <laughs> so but I just did that this morning so um, if you've already worked on this homework um, if you go back through it um, You'll you'll see some that some problems have been deleted. Um, if you'd already worked on those problems, you get credit for them anyway. Um, you get credit for them. So uh, let me see if this is going to show this properly. Um, so uh, this is not one that was deleted, but I wanted to mention this problem. Um, the um, um, so here they're giving you a graph. That is the graph of a parabola, although I'm not sure that they uh, explicitly mentioned that, which they should, okay, uh, for all of these uh, 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 concepts to apply. But anyway, that is supposed to be the graph of a parabola. It looks like a parabola, but lots of curves look like parabolas that aren't parabolas. Um, so they really should have said uh, this is a parabola. But anyway, um, so assuming it's a parabola there, they're, then they're asking you, uh, they're not giving you the formula, right, but they're just asking you some information about what, would, uh, what the formula would look like, okay, uh, and then other questions about the parabola, some of which are kind of obvious, um, uh, uh, maybe some not so obvious. So, um, for instance, here they're asking you for, uh, what, when they get to it, they're asking you for what's the vertex, right? Well, that's easy to read just off of the graph, okay? So you can easily there read the uh, vertex, which is there at 1, negative 2. Uh, remember, the vertex is a point, so you have to enter coordinates, right, okay, uh, when you get to uh, uh, that question. Um, here they're asking you for the sign of the leading coefficient, right? So they haven't sh shown you the formula. Uh, 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 but if we were to write down the formula, right, uh, they want to know what the sign of the leading coefficient would be. What would that be? Positive, right. Uh, and how can you deduce that? Who said that? Positive. <laughs> Someone said positive. <laughs> okay. Right. What? Yeah, the parabola opens upward, right, so the leading coefficient has to be uh, positive. Now, we didn't mention this uh, in class, so uh, that's what I wanted to mention, uh, axis of symmetry. That uh, just means uh, this uh, vertical line that runs, the vertical line that runs through the middle of the parabola, okay? Um, and uh, parabolas are symmetric about that vertical line, so that would be the vertical line that runs through the uh, vertex right here. So it's this vertical line right through the vertex. And I guess they're asking for what's the equation of that line. Remember, vertical lines, vertical lines, straight up and down lines, always have equations of the form x equal to a constant. Uh, horizontal lines have equations of the form y equal to a constant. So the axis of symmetry here is a, a vertical line, so it's going to have a, a, a equation x equal to, and in this case it would be x equal to 1, right? Because uh, that vertical line is along 1 uh, on the x-axis. So the axis of symmetry there is x equals to uh, 1. Um, I think you can easily answer now uh, uh, where, the, uh, uh, where the function is increasing and decreasing. That's pretty obvious, right? Okay. Yeah. In this case, it's going to be de decreasing to the vertex, which is at x equals 1, right? And then it's going to be increasing after x equals 1. 
And domain and range is also easy to read off of the graph, correct? Okay. So the domain here would be, since this parabola is continuing on the left and the right, the domain is going to end up being all real numbers, so easy domain. Okay. And the range, uh, the y, set of y values, right? Uh, notice that begins at minus 2. So this parabola doesn't dip below the vertex, right? Minus 2. So the range would be... Um, from minus 2 up to positive uh, infinity, okay? Well, most of those questions you can answer, except maybe, uh, uh, since we didn't talk about, I didn't get a defined axis of symmetry, right, uh, what the axis of symmetry is. And then you just have to think about the shape of the parabola, right, to know what the sign of the leading coefficient is. Okay, so there's a very similar problem. And see, this problem now I have deleted. Okay, so that problem is gone. So that's problem 5 and 6 and 7 have been uh, cut. All right, so if you were wondering about those questions or struggled with those questions earlier, uh, if you recall, um, the, uh, those questions I've uh, taken out. All right. Um, I wanted to mention now... Um, one other question here, okay, um, this one, which actually is easy, uh, but you do have to think about it a, a, a little bit, okay? So uh, they're asking you, uh, where is this? So if you graph this uh, function, that's going to be a parabola, right? Because that's a quadratic function. Uh, you have x squared minus 6x. And um, they're asking where it's increasing and where is it decreasing, but they're not showing you the graph, okay? So you have to imagine uh, the graph, all right, okay? Uh, you have to imagine uh, uh, what the graph looks like. Now, you can actually make this graph, okay? So if you want to, you can actually construct the graph and actually look and see where it's increasing and decreasing, okay? But you really don't have to actually draw the graph, okay? Because you can deduce this just from the information that you've got in the, um, uh, in the formula for the parabola, okay? You might have to maybe sketch out a, a, a kind of a crude graph, all right, uh, 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 of it, but, um, but you don't really have to construct a, a really nice graph, okay, uh, of this parabola, all right? So, uh, well, let's think about then just a, a very crude graph of the parabola. So um, I'm going to just uh, scribble here, you know, a set of axes, right? And, but I don't have to label them very carefully. And um, so what's this parabola going to look like uh, when we graph it? Which way is it opening? Which way? Uh, which way is it opening? Up, right, okay. So that's opening up because the leading coefficient is what? What? Positive, right. Yeah, what is the leading coefficient here? One, right, okay. Uh, uh, you have an invisible coefficient one on the x squared, right? So the leading coefficient one, that's positive, so you know the parabola is going to uh, open up, correct? Um, what's the middle coefficient here? What is it there? Negative six, right, okay. So the middle coefficient is negative six, and what's the constant coefficient here? Zero. Right, you don't have a constant in that formula, so you can assume that's zero. Uh, by the way, remember, that's the same as the um, y-intercept, right? Okay, so this parabola is going to cross the y-axis right at zero, so it's going to touch the origin uh, right there, okay? All right, now, um, to determine uh, where it's increasing or decreasing, we know it's opening upward, right, because the leading coefficient is positive. So we know it's opening upward. That means somewhere it's going to be decreasing, somewhere it's going to be increasing. Uh, and to figure that out exactly, we need to know where is the vertex, because that's where it's going to switch from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So if we can determine uh, uh, the coordinates of the vertex, right, then um, we'll be able to answer this question. So this is really a question, as many uh, parabola questions are, this is really a question about Where's the vertex, okay? Because once you've located the vertex, then you know a lot about the parabola. Um, an, a, a other type of question that occurs frequently for parabolas, sometimes in disguise, is where are the x-intercepts, all right? So many uh, questions that involve parabolas are uh, really asking you about uh, the x-intercepts of the uh, parabola, okay? All right, so, um, but we know, right, our formula for the vertex. So we've got this very handy formula, right? that we can use to determine the coordinates of the vertex. Remember that formula is um, minus b over 2a, right? That's the x-coordinate of the 
vertex, correct? Okay, and then you just plug that into the function, whatever your function is, right? And um, whatever your function formula is, and then you can find the uh, uh, the other coordinate of the vertex. So if we fill in our values here, I get minus a minus 6 over 2 times 1. This minus comes from the formula, right? And that minus is the fact that b is negative. So you end up with uh, uh, 6 over 2, uh, which is 3. Okay. So the um, x coordinate of the vertex is right over here. Uh, on the positive side of the x-axis at 3. Um, let's see, what about the uh, y-coordinate of the vertex? Well, again, just plug 3 into the formula, right? So we just have to calculate 3 squared minus 6 times 3. 3 squared minus 6 times 3. So that should be easy to calculate, right? That's what, 9 minus 18, right? And um, that's negative 9. So if I take out all of the calculations there uh, in the middle, my vertex is at 3 and uh, minus 9. So your vertex is at 3, and then down here on the uh, 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 y-axis, right, at uh, minus 9, and this parabola is opening upward, so it's going up like this, right, okay? I may not have drawn it very carefully there. I do know it goes through this point, okay? Um, uh, I don't know what the other x-intercept is. Uh, we could discover that, but that's not really the point of the question. Uh, I just want to know where uh, the curve is increasing and where it's decreasing, right? So over here on the left, it's decreasing. So how would we write that uh, that set down? So what? From where to where is it decreasing? Negative infinity to 3, right, okay. So you give your answer in terms of the x-axis. So it's decreasing from minus infinity to 3, right? Remember, we always have this question of whether the 3 should be included in this set or not, okay? I'm just going to include it there. And then it's going to be increasing for the rest of the, going to be increasing for the rest of the domain there. So uh, increasing from 3 to um, positive infinity. Um, so you don't, again, you don't have to really uh, make a nice graph of this uh, uh, parabola uh, uh, to answer this question. In fact, uh, you could uh, uh, really uh, do away with uh, this graph altogether. I think you can imagine uh, uh, enough of the uh, graph in your head, right, okay, uh, to figure out where it's increasing, decreasing. What you need to know really, the key thing there is the vertex. Uh, that you really do have to calculate. Actually, only the x coordinate of the vertex, right? Okay, I really uh, uh, don't care uh, that the y coordinate is down here at minus nine. That's true, uh, 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 but uh, uh, the, the key thing to answer this question is just what is the x coordinate of the vertex, uh, which is three, because that's where it's going to switch from, uh, in this case, from decreasing to uh, increasing. All right, we do know how to find the x-intercepts, though. How do we find the x-intercepts? This is not part of this question, but while I'm uh, uh, standing here, how do we find the x-intercepts? Set it equal to zero, right? So that's the same for uh, any function. So you would take the x squared minus uh, 6x. Is that what it was? x squared minus 6x, right? Uh, set that equal to zero, correct? Okay. And then um, solve that equation. And that's a quadratic equation because the unknown is squared. But you've got lots of options now. Well, at least two, right? Major options for solving that equation. The first one is what? So what? We, what's kind of our default choice for solving a quadratic equation? What technique would we try first? Factor, right. So, so try factoring first. But if you can't get anywhere with factoring, OK, sometimes uh, uh, you get lucky and it factors easily, sometimes not so easily, right? Uh, or not at all. Uh, uh, so if you get lucky with the factoring, that's great. That makes it easy to solve. If you can't, you can always use the quadratic formula, right, as long as you know the coefficients, OK, um, of the equation. Uh, which we know here. But this one does factor because you can factor x squared minus 6x by factoring out x. So uh, see, that factors really easily. So uh, uh, there you have your product equals 0. So that means um, either x is 0 or x minus 6. 
uh, has to be zero. So one of the x-intercepts is zero. We already knew that, okay? One of the x-intercepts is zero, and the other one is six. So my picture is not um, very, uh, well, it's not bad, but it's not really accurate, right? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. It actually crosses the x-axis over here at six, okay? Uh, instead of where I drew it, okay? <laughs> Once you know the x-intercepts and the vertex, and the y-intercept for a parabola, um, it, it's really pretty easy to graph it then by hand, okay? Um, those are really the key pieces of information uh, for a, um, a, a parabola, all right? So if you're asked uh, on an exam or uh, on homework, right, to uh, uh, graph a parabola, that's what you want to look for, right? Okay, find the vertex. You can calculate that. Find the x-intercepts. That may be a little bit harder, okay, because it might involve the quadratic formula. So find the x-intercepts. Remember, they sometimes do not exist. And then also, uh, because it's easy to find, find the y-intercept, right, okay? And with those pieces of information, you can usually draw a, a, a nice graph, okay, uh, of the uh, a parabola by hand, all right, without having to rely on uh, your calculator or uh, your computer. Okay, all right, so uh, there's some, um, there's just some uh, tips about uh, uh, homework problems there. Okay, so remember that's due tomorrow, all right, there are seven, well, there were 20 problems, but remember three have been deleted, so you've got 17 problems there. Um, some of them are pretty straightforward, but some of them might involve uh, some work, okay, so um, uh, allow yourself time, right, to... Uh, uh, to finish that homework, all right? Um, okay. Now, well, let's get, we'll get to this in, um, I was going to look at the um, activity sheet for a second, but we'll get to that later, all right? We finished one problem off of that, and I wanted to review that, but we'll do that later. Uh, before I leave this, do y'all have any uh, particular questions? that you want to ask, that you recall about this homework? Because I know you've worked on it, okay? Or at least you've opened it. I didn't see how much progress. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, for the ones who worked on it, there was a fair amount of progress. There was a lot of work left to be done, but uh, there was some progress on that, okay? Um, all right, so I'm going, to take your, I'm going to take your word for it, okay? All right. Okay, so uh, I do have a little bit of a, uh, a review activity here to start with, though, okay? Uh, this was uh, the last example from um, one of the earlier sets of notes that we didn't quite do in class. I think this is a notes about using the quadratic formula. Uh, and um, so this problem is a little bit uh, uh, different from the other problems. Um, it says we want to take this equation... Notice this equation has two unknowns in it, okay? Um, one of which is t, right? Obviously, and the other one is k. Um, but what they want us to do is take that equation and solve it for t, capital T, all right? And um, so when we're uh, uh, looking at that equation and solving for capital T, we're going to think of the k as being a constant, all right, so we're going to think of the k as being a fixed value, but we just don't uh, know what uh, fixed value k is, all right, okay? Um, and it's t that we're treating as the key unknown here that we're solving for. So think of k as just being a number, all right? But don't plug in a value for k. You can't do that, all right? But just assume it's some number that's fixed, okay? And the t, again, is uh, uh, sort of playing the role of the x. That is the... Uh, uh, unknown that we're solving for, okay? So if t is the unknown that we're solving for in this equation, then what sort of equation is this? We don't have that many types of equations, so uh, you could probably uh, guess there and almost uh, certainly be correct, all right? What sort of equation will this be? Quadratic. Quadratic, right, okay. We really have only talked about two types of equations. Maybe we've talked about others, but the, uh, maybe linear and quadratic really are what we've uh, focused on, correct? So this one is quadratic because with t is the unknown, right? Uh, uh, you've got it squared, okay? So um, that means you've got a, a quadratic equation here uh, to solve, all right? 
well, look, we're, uh, 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 you know, again, our two uh, main techniques for solving quadratic equations are factoring and the quadratic formula. So we're not going to be able to factor here because we don't have that number uh, for k. So it's not going to be easy to factor. So it looks like we're going to have to resort to the quadratic formula. So you may be wondering, how can I use the quadratic formula if I don't know the value for k? And the answer is uh, just like you always use the quadratic formula, okay? Um, uh, the fact that you don't have a specific value for k is not going to stop you from applying the quadratic formula and solving this equation, okay? All right, so uh, remember that quadratic formula. Let me write it down here just for reference. Um, so the solutions, right, to this equation, normally I would write x equal here, but in this case, the unknown is t. So the solutions to this equation are going to be what? Uh, minus b, uh, plus or minus, you know, square root of uh, b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. So we just have to identify what the a, b, and c are for this quadratic equation. So what's the leading coefficient? That's the a, right? What's the middle coefficient, the b, and what's the constant coefficient in this situation, right? Let's see if we can do that, okay? So that's the key first step in solving this equation for t, okay? So what is the leading coefficient here? Uh, not t, okay? t is not a coefficient. It's the unknown, right? So, uh, uh, but what, so where are you looking, uh, uh, Leslie, for that leading coefficient? Yeah, you're looking for this term, right? Okay, so you're thinking about what is the constant that's multiplied by this term? Well, what is it there? It's invisible, so what must it be? One, one right. So the leading coefficient here is one. See, you could think of this as being one, uh, x squared. Uh, uh, we're just using capital T here instead of x. So uh, 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 the leading coefficient there is one. All right, so we got that, okay? All right, so uh, uh, one-third of the way here to... Um, Writing down those coefficients. Now, what about the middle coefficient? What is the middle coefficient going to be here? What now? Wait, say that again. K. Well, all right. All right. So, uh, all right. So, Arthur, explain what you're thinking there. Why? Why were you thinking K? Because you've got two squared variables. No, uh, this is not a squared variable. That is like a number to us, right? Okay, because remember that's what I said. T is the variable here. Okay, right? So um, yeah. So what's the middle coefficient there? What? What'd you say? K. But why K? Because it's the coefficient to the middle T. Ah, that's right. Okay, that's exactly the correct explanation there. Right? Okay. See, your unknown here is T, right? Okay. And what's multiplied by the T? It's the K. Right, okay. It would be negative k. Yeah, you're right. Because remember, include the sign always with the coefficient, okay? So the middle uh, uh, coefficient here is um, uh, minus k. Ah, now see, that looks funny, right? Because you're used to writing down a number, right, for b, but you don't have to write down uh, always there a, a number, okay? Remember, k represents a number, all right? Um, what's the constant here then? So what term there doesn't have, uh, remember, uh, T is our unknown, right? Okay, T is our unknown, Eduardo. So what's going to be the constant here? So see, t is the unknown, so when you're looking for the constant, you're always looking for that term that doesn't have the unknown in it, right? Okay? Uh, so it would be which minus k? I see some minus k's here, so. This one? Which one? <laughs> Can you say that to me instead of the one at the end or something like that? Okay. Yeah, all right. So this one? But that's not just a, a k. What is that? That's k squared, right, okay? So that's k squared is going to be our uh, uh, constant here, all right? 
So for the C, you're going to write down uh, K squared. But now, Eduardo, I made a mistake, okay? Because the C is not just K squared. What should I have included there? The negative right, okay? You want to include the minus sign as well. That's important because otherwise you're going to make a sign mistake, okay? All right, so look, uh, there's the quadratic formula, right? Of course, that's familiar to us, so we know that quadratic formula. There are the, uh, there are the three coefficients that go into the quadratic formula. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to finish solving this uh, a, a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula with those values, okay? Be careful about your signs, all right? Try to at least get things substituted correctly, okay? Simplifying things might be a, that might be a challenge, all right? But, um, uh, 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 but at least try to get the uh, coefficient substituted right. If you don't get that far, we won't be able to simplify it. So, Montel, start doing that, okay? <laughs> well, of course I want you to do it on paper. Yeah, you're not doing that mentally. Come on. <laughs> yes, Chris, do you have some paper? Did you finish that, Juliana? I don't know if I'm right. Okay, so... So um, if this is negative, would these cancel out and still become negative? Uh, let's see. Remember, this is multiplied, though, so it looks like you're adding right here, but you're not, right? You're adding. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you're... Uh, <gasps> oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but Yeah, but also, uh, uh, you left off the exponent here, right? Okay, shouldn't that be a... Squared. Yeah, mm -hmm. a squared there, right? Okay. So but now when you multiply these things, what do you get? You get minus 4 times 1. Just do it one at a time. Minus 4 times 1 is negative 4, but negative 4 times minus k squared is positive 4 k squared. So you should write plus 4 k squared, right? Oh, yeah. It's just I had to divide it. Here and then here and then uh, yeah, no, no, that's but you don't distribute there, right? You just uh, just because uh, you're not um, it's not four times one minus k squared, it's four times one times minus k squared, right? Uh huh. Ah, there you go, oh, right? Okay. okay, yeah. Now, how many k squareds is that though? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, yeah. So, see, so you can simplify some there by hand. What do you have here? Oh, I had uh, this, but I don't think it's right. Uh, no, that's right, right? Minus 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 1 times negative k is plus 4 k squared. Right, okay. Oh, let's see. Um, yeah, the, the way you wrote this is weird. Uh, this is not, the square there is not outside that parentheses. Um, it's inside the parentheses. So minus 4 times 1 is negative 4 times minus k squared is plus 4 k squared, okay? What is this? That's, uh, so that would be the same thing, the square would be inside the parentheses. Um, yeah, in this case, the a minus is inside the parentheses. So when you take minus k and square it, what do you get? Uh, positive k 
k squared. Yeah, there you go, positive k squared. All right, now, now you can work with this, okay? Because those two terms are like terms. So you've got a k squared plus a 4k squared. How many k squareds do you have there? Four. Uh, 1k squared plus 4k oh, two, squared. 2k squared. Yeah, let me try again. Um, 1k squared plus 4k squared is 5, right? 5k squared, right? Be sure you extend this, by the way, all the way across. And the formula that goes all the way across, all right, like this. All right, ah, so now you can write this as 5k squared, right? Okay, so, um, well, it's all of this over 2, right? Okay, all of that's over 2. All right, all right, all right. so this is a good start. Now, there's uh, almost, this is all we can do, but um, but uh, in, this, um, uh, uh, in this radical, notice you have a, uh, square root of k squared. That you can compute. What is the square root of k squared? What's the square root of any number squared? Yeah, try an experiment there for me. Let's do it with a number. So, write square root of 2 squared. Square root of 2 squared. What would that be? 2? Two? 2, yeah. Ah, right, so you can extract outside of the radical of k, but you can't do anything with 5, so because 5 is, yeah, 5 is not a perfect square, so. so. k plus or minus k square root of 5 over 2. Ah, there you go, right, okay. Hold on. Okay, tell that to me again. Explain <laughs> it you have negative k times negative k. So mm -hmm. positive k. That certainly is. Ah, this is nice, right? Um, one thing uh, uh, I'm caution you about is um, don't try to conserve uh, pencil lead there. This this goes all the way across. This goes all the way across like this, okay? Um, but this is a squared. You, you left off your two there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, so that's almost completely simplified, but uh, there's something else you can simplify, because here you have square root of k squared. What is the square root of k squared? What's the square root of any quantity squared? This will be k, right? Yeah, when you take the square root of k squared, what do you get? It's just k, that's right, yeah. So you just write that down. Square root of k squared will just be k, right? So this, you can extract a square, uh, 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 the square root of k squared. So you can pull out of the radical a k. So you can rewrite this with k in front and this out, gone, right? Yeah, because you extracted the square root of k squared. You can't do anything with a square root of 5, though. 5 is not a perfect square. Uh, so yeah, if you had square root of 9, that would be something. Or square root of 16, that would be something. K plus or minus K over 5. Yeah, K square root of 5 all over what? 2. There you go, right. Okay, yeah. So that's pretty, uh, that's about as far as we can go by hand uh, without knowing what K is, right? Mm-hmm. But you didn't add right, because you have k squared plus 4k squared. So how many k squares do you have? You're adding here. Oh, okay. so this is like one apple plus four apples. Oh, so it's of fifth? So how many uh, uh, k squareds do you have there? Okay, so this k squared goes towards... Yeah, those are like terms, right? It's like taking an apple plus four apples. How many apples would you have? Oh, so five. Yeah, okay. so one k squared plus four k squared is five k squared. Okay. Don't okay. don't uh, 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 add the exponents or multiply the exponents. That's not the way that works. Okay. Aha. Okay. So um, as I expected, there I saw a few weaknesses in your algebra skills. Okay. But we need to uh, 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 remedy some of those. All right. So um, uh, the simple, the uh, 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 substitutions, uh, uh, y'all did those uh, uh, good, right? So we have minus b, but b is minus k, so you get minus a minus k, right? Plus or minus, because you can have two possible solutions here, right? And then uh, minus k squared. B squared, right? Be sure you put the minus uh, a K in parentheses there, squared, 
right? And then minus 4 times a is 1. That's easy. And then c, however, is minus uh, uh, k squared, okay? Now, one thing some people were doing is they were writing the 2 here, okay? But that's not the way the formula works. That division bar, that fraction bar goes all the way across, okay? Right? This is part of the fraction. Of course, the radical is also part of the fraction. So make sure you draw that all the way across, okay? Or you're going to introduce mistakes that way. I see that frequently. All right, so, um, but the denominator is just 2 times um, a, which is 1. So you just get 2, okay? All right. Really, th though, that's in a sense, that is it. Those are the two solutions, uh, 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 two possible solutions to this equation. One is this plus the radical over 2, right? The other one is this minus the radical over 2. But let's try to simplify this by hand as much as we can. We're not going to be able to simplify it completely because we don't have a value for k, right? But let's try to do as much of the algebra as we can by hand. So let's see. Um, minus minus k, that's easy. That's plus k, right? plus or minus square root of, now when you square a negative k, see the minus sign is being squared also. So you get positive k squared, right? And now, uh, uh, as I cautioned you uh, last time, be careful about this second term. So be careful about this product. So let's do it one uh, a multiplication at a time. Minus 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times minus k squared is positive 4 k squared. So here you're going to write plus because it's positive and then 4 k squared. So plus 4 k squared. All of this divided by 2. And now you have to remember some of your beginning algebra. Under the radical, these are like terms because they're both k squared terms. So you can combine those terms, right? You just have to add the coefficients together. 1k squared plus 4k squared is 5k squared, right? So you get uh, k plus or minus square root of 5k squared over 2. And now here's the last little simplification, but you don't want to leave this out. Um, but this is an easy one to overlook. Um, we have a square root here, right? And we're trying to extract the square root of 5 times k squared. You can't do much uh, with square root of 5 because 5 is not a perfect square. If that were square root of 9 or square root of 16, we could simplify it. But square root of 5, just not by hand, not going to be able to simplify that. But we also have square root of k squared. That we can simplify because k squared is a perfect square. What is the square root of k squared? k, right, okay. The square root of any quantity uh, squared is the quantity, right? So square root of 2 squared is 2. Square root of 3 squared is 3. Square root of k squared is k. So you can extract a k from under the square root. So you get k plus or minus k, but the 5 is left alone. So you have k plus or minus k times the square root of 5 over 2. That's where I would stop. I don't think I can do much else that's useful there in simplifying this by hand. Okay. By the way, let me, let me caution you about one other thing. Um, look right here. You may be tempted right here to try to say, okay, here I have square root of k squared plus 4k squared, so I'm going to take the square roots of each of these things. Uh, of square root of k squared is k, and square root of 4k squared is 2k. So you might think you can write k plus 2k here as the square root, but you can't do that, all right? You cannot uh, take uh, the square root of these things added together separately. If they're multiplied together, like we had here, then you can extract the square roots. But when they're added together, you cannot do that. Okay, uh, so don't write, don't think here. This is k plus two k. Um, doesn't it doesn't work that way? Okay, yeah, Arthur.
Uh, 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 what now? Where? Over at the beginning, where it has negative case where? This? C or B, I mean? Yeah. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. In the original formula, it's squared, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and B is minus K, right? So you, yeah. right? B is minus K. So you have the quantity minus K squared. It is positive. I did write it as positive here. Yeah. Well, okay, Arthur. So uh, write it. Let's write it down. All right. So minus, um, if I can get a pen that writes, uh, minus uh, 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 k squared. Right. So I did. I did that substitution correctly. Right. So you see that, correct? Yeah. Right. So, but what is uh, what does it mean to square a number? You multiply it by itself. Right. So we have minus k times minus k. Minus times minus is what? Plus k times k is what? <laughs> okay. Does that make sense now? All right. Okay, so um, there's applying uh, uh, the quadratic formula in a little bit different, a little bit novel situation, all right, but still works. All right, well, now we're going to um, uh, apply the quadratic formula in, uh, in even a more unusual situation. All right, so um, last time uh, I was introducing you to this really key idea in, um, in mathematics, so you may be familiar with this or maybe not, it's fine if you're not. Okay, um, uh, and uh, uh, that is that um, although we almost uh, uh, in practice uh, uh, we frequently uh, uh, maybe you know 90% of the time right okay uh, when we're dealing with numbers we uh, are working with numbers that are part of the real number system they are on the real number line the fam uh, f a real number line that we're all familiar with the x axis for instance is just a real number line okay um, but it, it turns out that there are quantities uh, that are useful in mathematics that we also call numbers, okay, because they work like numbers, uh, but they are not part of the real number line, okay? So uh, that's kind of a mind-blowing idea at first. Uh, how can we have numbers that are not part of the real number line, okay? And the answer is, well, we just can, all right, because we have uh, quantities that are uh, useful to us uh, that behave like numbers. We use them like numbers, but they just are not part of the real number system. It took mathematicians now a long time to come to grips with this fact, okay, that there were quantities that they needed, all right, uh, for important purposes, but were not part of the uh, uh, real number line, okay? And actually, that took centuries, in fact, okay, uh, uh, for mathematicians to finally uh, 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 accept that idea, okay, that there are numbers that they are not part of the real uh, number system, all right? Um, and so last time we demonstrated such a quantity, okay, and that is square root of minus 1. So last time we proved that uh, square root of minus 1 uh, cannot exist on the uh, x-axis. It's, it's not part of the real uh, number system. Nevertheless, though, that quantity, square root of minus 1, has lots of important applications, all right? Uh, it's, in fact, vital to... Um, well, modern society, okay, because uh, lots of important applications in engineering, particularly electri electrical engineering, all right, uh, uh, but other uh, 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 disciplines depend on this quantity, square root of minus one, all right, and so uh, just because it's unfamiliar to us doesn't mean that it's not useful, all right, or that it is not authentic, all right. However, it's, it's, it's okay to be uncomfortable with that idea of square root of minus 1 because, uh, indeed, uh, uh, mathematicians were uncomfortable with the notion of using square root of minus 1, okay, um, for a long time, all right? 
Uh, it took them a while to finally uh, wrap their heads around this. Okay, so uh, uh, this uh, a quantity square root of minus one, not part of the uh, again, not part of the real number line. Okay, so um, to contrast uh, the fact that uh, square root of minus one is not a real number, we're going to refer to that as an imaginary number. All right. In some sense, that is an unfortunate term, okay? Because when you say minus one is an imaginary number, you're thinking, oh, it doesn't really exist, okay? No, it does exist, okay? It exists, and we use it uh, uh, just like we use other numbers. Maybe not as frequently, okay, as we use other numbers, but it does exist, and it have important applications. The reason the term imaginary has gotten attached to it, well, there's lots of historical uh, reasons for this, okay? But a convenient way to uh, think of why we call a, a minus a, a square root of minus one an imaginary number is just to uh, 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 accentuate the fact that square root of minus one is not part of the real number system. Okay, uh, it's not a real number; it's its own type of number. Therefore, we call it an imaginary number because imaginary and real are kind of uh, uh, opposite terms, right? Okay. Um, all right. So. Um, there we've learned a new type of uh, number today, okay, uh, square root of uh, minus 1. Now, um, we're going to learn how to do uh, uh, some uh, 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 operations with square root of minus 1. Um, and uh, uh, since square root of minus 1 is a number, I claim, right, okay, we do the same things with square root of minus 1 that we do with uh, 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 real numbers. We do arithmetic with numbers, right? That's what numbers, uh, uh, that's one of the things that we uh, uh, do with numbers. So we also can do arithmetic with square root of minus one, okay? Um, and it, it's actually pretty easy to understand the arithmetic for uh, 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 this imaginary number uh, minus one. Uh, when, so we'll show you some examples of this. Um, but before I, before I do anything else, um, I've got to come up with a nice notation for square root of minus one because this is very clumsy. All right. So um, uh, 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 to refer to this number by always having to write that radical sign, okay, and then put a minus one under it, that is uh, too much work. All right. So I'm going to give a uh, I'm going to make up a, 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 some notation for square root of minus one, and um, here's what I'm going to use. All right. Um, so I can't use a digit, right? I can't use a digit like one, two, three, or four because I use all those in representing real numbers. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow the letter I from the alphabet, okay? And we're going to use that as our notation for um, square root of uh, minus one, okay? So when you see me write down I uh, 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 frequently, okay? Um, uh, that will represent the uh, number square root of uh, minus one. Okay. All right. So um, let's think a little bit about um, let's think a little bit about how how square root of um, minus one works. Just a little bit. And at this point, there's not much we can say here about um, that uh, number i, okay? But I do know this, okay, already. So if I take i and multiply it by i, right? So i is a number, right? So I can do arithmetic with it. So if I take i and multiply it by i, I do know what the result is going to be here, though, okay? Um, What's the result going to be? Well, let's think about it. This is, remember, i is really my notation for square root of minus 1, right? So I'm taking square root of minus 1 times square root of minus 1. And, um, of course, when you multiply a quantity by itself, that's better known as doing what? Squaring it right, OK? So what I really have here is square root of minus 1 squared and what does the square root of minus 1 squared have to turn out to be? Whenever you take the square root of a number and square it, what do you have to get? That will just be minus 1. That's right, okay? That will just be uh, minus 1. Aha! So there we've already done um, a little bit of arithmetic with um, square root of minus 1. 
i, okay? So when you take it and multiply it by itself, you get minus 1, okay? Ah, let's try this one also. What about i to the third power, okay? What's that going to end up being? Yeah, i to the third power. So what should i to the third power uh, be? Well, let's see. Um, I'm going to break this down in a particular way. I uh, uh, to the third power, right? That would be the same as I squared times I, correct? Right? Is not I to the third power? Is I squared times I? But the reason I wrote it like this is because I just calculated I squared on the previous line, right? This is I squared, correct? So what was I squared? Negative 1. So what we have here is, aha, minus i, all right? So when you take uh, 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 i and cube it, you get, interestingly, minus i, all right? Ah, so we can have the negative of i as well. Let's see, what about to the fourth power? Bet we can calculate this as well. Ah, I think so, right? Why is that, Arthur? That's right, i to the fourth pair is i squared times i squared, but we already calculated, right? i squared is minus 1. That's just actually by definition. And then you, so you have minus 1 times minus 1, which is positive 1. So i to the fourth power turns out to be um, positive 1, okay? See? So, uh, see, we can figure out uh, uh, some arithmetic with um, this so-called imaginary number i. Remember, i is what... We refer to that as an imaginary um, number. And again, just to, again, to sort of contrast it with the real numbers. Now, let me show you something else we can do now. Um, now that we know square root of minus 1, I claim we can also now write down square root of minus 4. So, wonder why that's the case. Well, let's see. Um, square root of minus 4. Well, minus 4, you can write that as minus 1 times 4, correct? Right? Isn't that minus 4? But now you can extract these square roots. What's the square root of minus 1? I. And what's the square root of 4? 2. So this just turns out to be 2 times i. Okay. So square root of minus 4 is 2 times i. That is a, a different imaginary number from i. Okay. Ah, so now we know two imaginary numbers, i and 2i. Um, okay. Okay. That's that's right. So, uh, Arthur, what's square root of minus nine going to be then? Yeah, that's uh, a minus nine is a uh, 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 negative one times nine, right? But these two uh, square roots now we can extract, right? So we get what there? Uh, square root of minus one is what? And uh, i and square root of nine is three. So you get here three i. Okay. Oh, so there's a there's a third imaginary number. Okay, um, three times i, and in fact you can uh, get a, 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 a bunch of imaginary numbers in this same way. Anytime you take a real number, any real number, any real number that you like, and multiply it by i, that gives you um, a new imaginary number. Okay. So this set of numbers that we form by taking a real number and multiplying it by i, square root of minus 1, that set is the set of imaginary numbers. So all imaginary numbers look like this, okay? They have the same form. It's some real number times i, okay? So notice all of these um, imaginary numbers, right, that I just wrote down, they all have that format, right? Uh, I is 1 times I, 
uh, uh, 2i is 2 times i, right? 3i is 3 times i, okay? So, again, remember, b is not an imaginary number, right? That's a real number, and then you multiply it by square root of minus 1i, and that product gives you um, what's called an imaginary number. But those numbers, those imaginary numbers, do not, they're not part of the real number line. Okay, now, um, so now that's interesting. We have uh, uh, two sets of numbers now, okay? Um, we have the imaginary numbers and we have the real numbers. Um, they do uh, intersect in one place though, okay? So there is one number that counts as both real and imaginary, all right? So um, what would that uh, uh, one special number be? Kind of obvious there. What's a really special number that zero, right? It's going to be zero, right? Okay. So zero actually does count as both a real number and um, an imaginary number. Why is that? Well, zero is obviously a real number, right? Because it's on the real number line. But it's also an imaginary number because zero you can write as zero times i. Okay. That's zero. So, um, again, imaginary numbers, correct, okay, uh, are just real numbers times square root of minus 1. So, 0 uh, 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 counts as both a real number and uh, an imaginary number. All right, now, um, have one more level to go here, okay? All right, look, um, it turns out... Uh, um, that the imaginary numbers and the real numbers, although they're kind of completely separate from one another, except for zero, all right, um, they're both uh, uh, subsets of a larger set of numbers. So they're both contained in a big super set of numbers called the complex numbers. So there's a giant set of numbers that contains both the real numbers and the imaginary numbers as subsets. That giant set is called the complex numbers. Um, so that's why I've got that uh, uh, complex there sort of at the top of that diagram because there, that big set of numbers includes both real numbers and imaginary numbers. Here's what complex numbers look like, okay? So I'm going to write down some examples to show you what complex numbers look like. Uh, anytime you take a real number, what's your favorite real number? Don't say zero, though. What? Eight, okay. Anytime you take a real number and add or subtract from that, or you can think of it just adding uh, to that, an imaginary number. So let's write down what's an imaginary number here we can add. Remember, we wrote down some imaginary numbers here, right? Okay. So anytime you take a real number, and add on to that an imaginary number, or you can think of it as subtracting the imaginary number, that combination forms what is called a complex number. Okay. Why is it complex? Well, because it has two parts to it, right? It has a real number part and imaginary number part. All right. So all numbers formed this way, by taking a real number and adding to that an imaginary number, those numbers are called complex numbers. And that big superset of numbers contains both the real numbers and the imaginary numbers. Why are real numbers, by the way, also complex numbers? So if you have a real number, how can you write that as a complex uh, uh, number? Let's take a real number. Let's say pi. Pi is a real number, right? Pi is, uh, occupies about 3.14 on the um, uh, real number line, all right? So, um, of course, we usually express pi, right, by using the Greek letter pi. But remember, that's a constant number. How can you write that as an imaginary number? Uh, I'm sorry, as a complex number. Remember, complex numbers have a real number uh, plus an imaginary number. So how can you write pi as a real number plus... Um, an imaginary number. Yeah, 
now how can you write pi in this form Montel so uh, uh, as a, a real number plus um, an imaginary number but you want it to be equal to pi Well, yeah, but yeah, but this is the symbol we use for pi, so we don't have to write down the 3.14. We can just uh, uh, use that symbol. So pi is like at the edge. What now? Wait, what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? Okay. Yeah, that's right. I want to I want to see if I can write pi in this form as a a, a real number plus an imaginary number, but I want it to equal pi. Uh, set what to zero? The, what is it, the i, the imaginary number? Right, i, yeah, that's square root of minus one, right? So what do you want to do with the i? Multiply it by zero. Okay, so I multiply that by zero. Yeah, and then what do you add to that? Ah, there you go. Excellent, Nadine, right? Okay, so you can write pi as pi plus 0 times i. Remember, 0 times i is just going to be 0, right? So here you'll just get pi, but see, that is written as a complex number, a real number plus uh, a, an imaginary number, okay? Um, you can do that for any real number, right? Take any uh, a real number that you like, right? Okay, so we could take 2, right? And we could uh, write that as 2 plus 0i, right? Or we could take the uh, real number minus 10, right? That's a real number. And we could write that as minus 10 plus 0i. That's still minus 10, correct? So, see, any real number can be written as a, a, a real number plus an imaginary part. That makes it a complex number. So, see, all real numbers are also complex numbers. That's why I said the real numbers are part of the big set of complex numbers. Now, what about imaginary numbers? I said these are also complex numbers. So if you take an imaginary number, how can you write that as a complex number? Let's, write, let's take uh, uh, i, our favorite imaginary number, right? So how can you write that as a complex number? It's got to be a real number plus an imaginary number. So how can you write i in this form so it fits this format? Think about what we did here. Plus what? Well, but you don't have to say square root of minus 1. You can just say i, right, okay? Yes, sure, right, okay? You can take i and you can write that as... Um, 0 plus itself, correct? Okay. So 0 is definitely a real number, and you're adding to that an imaginary number, but that just gives you i. Um, what about 2i? If you want to write that as a complex number, do the same thing, right? Okay. Just take 0 plus 2i, correct? Or you can do the same thing for any imaginary number, right? Okay. You can write it as zero plus itself that means it qualifies as a complex number so this big set of complex numbers includes the imaginary numbers sometimes uh, we call uh, numbers like these the pure imaginary numbers so it includes the pure imaginary numbers and it also includes the pure real numbers as well all right they're all part of this big superset of numbers but the complex numbers include numbers that are not pure imaginary are not real numbers. Here's an example of one, okay? And you can write down lots of others. Just take a real number plus an imaginary number. That gives you a complex number. So there are complex numbers that aren't pure imaginary and aren't pure real numbers. Um, wow, I wonder if, um, so, so here we've now introduced these two new sets of numbers, right? Um, imaginary and now this big set of numbers the set of complex numbers. I wonder if the complex numbers is also part of a larger set of um, numbers. Okay, maybe this diagram is not complete, so maybe the complex numbers sits in a bigger set of numbers.
Well, you'll be relieved to know the answer to that is really no, okay? Um, uh, uh, the complex numbers really uh, includes all of the uh, 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 quantities, all right, that we're going to find useful uh, in mathematics. There's a, a theoretical reasons for that, okay? But once you've learned about the complex numbers, you've sort of learned what there is to know about numbers, all right? Um, all right. Well, look, uh, we don't know much about complex numbers yet, okay? That's, uh, 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 we've only written down a few examples. And, um, but what we want to do with complex numbers, of course, since they're numbers, is we want to perform arithmetic with them. So um, let's talk about how the arithmetic works. And that fortunately turns out to be pretty straightforward, okay? Especially for algebra students. Uh, it, uh, it turns out to be pretty easy there to um, do arithmetic with complex numbers. Let's look at some examples here. All right. So um, here I'm adding two complex numbers. See, this is a complex number, minus 3 plus 4i, and this also is a complex number. So how do I know those are complex numbers? Because, see, here you have a real number. Minus 3, that's obviously a real number, right? Plus this pure imaginary number, 4i, okay? Whenever you combine a real number with an imaginary number, you get a complex number. Um, this is also a complex number, right? Uh, the real number, 5, and then this is the imaginary number, uh, minus i. All right, now let's see what we get when we add these two complex numbers together. If life makes any sense, right, um, when we add two complex numbers together, we better get another what? Um, complex number? Okay. Yeah, I hope so, right? Okay. Um, that's uh, 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 otherwise uh, uh, things are going to be odd, right? Um, okay, so uh, let's see if this happens. And the way to actually do this arithmetic is very similar to adding expressions in uh, beginning algebra class. Look, just uh, let's just uh, remove the parentheses. Uh, you can remove the parentheses by multiplying through uh, this coefficient in front of the parentheses, which in both cases is 1. So uh, you're going to get minus 3 plus 4i on the left there. And then on the right, you're going to get plus 5 minus i, OK? And then to keep simplifying, all you have to do is add the real numbers together, right? And then add the imaginary numbers together, OK? So um, what's minus 3 plus 5, of course? 2, right, OK? So um, here you'll get 2. And then we're taking 4i and we're subtracting i from it. That should be what? 3i, and that's exactly what it is, okay? So you get 2 plus 3i. This is kind of like 4x minus x is 3x. Well, 4i minus i is 3i, okay? Ah, so there is your sum. Um, uh, when you add these two complex numbers together, we got this uh, third complex number, 2 plus uh, 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 3i, okay? Here we're subtracting two complex numbers, but it's going to work, of course, uh, very much like addition. So to simplify this sum, just take 8 plus 2i minus 10 plus 5i, right? And um, what's that got to be? No, this is minus a minus 5i, right? So that's plus 5i, correct? Okay. And minus 10 is minus 10. So I wrote this down correctly. Now, how do I finish simplifying this? What now? There you go, right. Uh, 8 minus 10 is minus 2, and 2i plus 5i is 7i. So you get minus 2 plus 7i, right? See, very simple. Now, the multiplication is a little bit trickier, but not too much, all right? So let's try multiplying. See, this is multiplying now these two complex numbers. You're going to multiply these two complex numbers like these were expressions in algebra. So you have to multiply everything in the first parentheses by everything in the second parentheses, uh, one at a time. So let's do that. 
First, I take minus 3 times 5 is what? Minus 15, right? And then minus 3 times minus i is plus 3i, plus 3i, okay? And then 4i times 5 is 20i. And now here's the fun part. 4i minus i, well, 4 times minus 1 is negative, so you have minus 4. And what's i times i? That's i squared, okay? All right, so it looks like we get minus 15 plus 23i. And now here's the part we have to be careful with, all right, because I have minus 4 times i squared. And now I get my opportunity to remember what was i by definition? Square root of minus 1. That's right, okay? So remember, i is the square root of minus 1. So when you square i, what are you going to get? Negative 1, right? Negative 1, right? Whatever you square square root, you get uh, the quantity under the radical, right? So when you square, square root of minus 1, you're going to get minus 1, not positive 1. So we have here minus 4 times i squared is minus 1. i squared is minus 1. So you end up there with minus 15 plus 23i plus 4. And minus 15 plus 4 is minus 11, right? So there is our product. It's minus 11 plus 23i, okay? That is where you really have to pay attention, right? I, t I squared is not uh, uh, I or 1. It's negative 1. And that just comes about from the fact uh, that that's how we defined I, right? Okay? We said it's going to be the square root of uh, minus 1. Let's try one more here. So 5 minus i squared. Well, remember, uh, when you square a quantity, that means you multiply it by itself, right? So what's 5 minus i times 5 minus i? So you all are good at this kind of multiplication. What's 5 times 5? 25. And then you have 5 times minus i, so that's minus 5i, right? And then we have here, oops. And then we have here minus i times 5, so that's another minus 5i. And then what's the last product there? Minus i times minus i. This is the one you have to watch out for. So what's minus i times minus i? Positive i squared, exactly. So 25 minus... 10i, and then how much is i squared? Not 1, but what? Negative 1, yeah. i squared is negative 1. So you end up with um, 24 minus 10i, okay? So you have to keep in mind always, uh, uh, in the back of your mind, okay, i squared, by definition, is minus 1, okay? Uh, so that's a, a kind of unusual, right? You square something and you get a negative. That's why i is not part of the real number line, okay? <clears throat> um, all right. Okay, we're going to uh, 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 finish our... Uh, um, uh, um, See if we're going to finish that activity sheet today. I think we can only do uh, the uh, second activity on the activity sheet, all right, uh, today. Okay, so I think we've got time to do that. Uh, so, uh, uh, to, so we'll take a break. The, the 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 part on the back we cannot are not quite ready for it. We're almost ready for it, but not quite. So we won't do that one today. The third problem on the activity sheet from last time. But we're going to do the second problem, and uh, so uh, we'll start that together. Uh, after the break, I want to also review the first uh, uh, problem, okay? Um, all right, so let's stop here and take a few minutes, and then we'll come back and do that um, activity.